Hey everybody, this is Aaron from AaronsAudioCorner.com and today I'm going to review the Purify 6.5 inch midwoofer. This bad boy. I received this speaker as part of a two-way loudspeaker setup from Rick Craig at Sela Audio and is used in his Impreza two-way component uh, monitor bookshelf type speaker it's a very large bookshelf and i'll be reviewing that soon but i wanted to test this lone drive unit out first because i heard things in that speaker of his that i'd never heard before in the mid-range clarity detail i mean just stuff i was just thinking wow to the point where i thought all right my ears are messed up i'm going to leave this alone for a while i normally don't go crazy on superlatives and subjective talk when I talk about actual raw drivers because when they're used they can be used in any number of ways and depending on how you cross it over you know to a tweeter or a, a subwoofer or whatever um, that will affect what you hear that always affects the end product so that's typically why I don't talk about subjective terms when I talk about actual raw drive units because they're only part of the whole as opposed to loudspeakers where it's already the whole and I can review the whole because it is one big component however in this case the, I won't say the bread and butter, but one very great thing about the Impreza speaker by Rick is that the mid-range distortion is unlike anything I've ever heard. And it's just, it's clear, it's clean, the resolution is amazing. And I thought, all right, is it the speaker? So I took the speaker out, I tested it, and we're about to go through all that data. But I just wanna say some things about the speaker. One is, notice how funky the surround looks, and the surround is the part that attaches to the cone. This is done probably for multiple reasons, but I know one reason, and it actually shows up in the data. Typically, when you have the termination between the cone and the surround, if they're not terminated well, what will happen is you'll have the surround moving kind of out of phase with the cone at a certain frequency and that always that almost always lines up to around the 1 to 1.5 kilohertz region and that's based on the actual diameter uh, so in that case it would be a six and a half or a seven inch midwoofer where that happens what happens when you get that out of phase issue is you get a blip i'm gonna call it an impedance which indicates a resonance and that resonance shows up in frequency response as a pretty narrow dip around the one to one and a half K Hertz region. And that also shows up as high second order distortion and, and high, I mean like as much as 5%, depending on the level that you're listening to. And while some people are less susceptible to hearing that, there are certain cases where you will hear that, uh, depending on you, depending on the music that you're listening to. And for them to have gotten rid of that issue is something I'm very, very impressed with. Uh, not all speakers in this size do it, but the majority of them. Audio Technology does, does it. Um, ScanSpeak 18WU does it. Don Audio does it. Uh, there's other ones that I've all tested that I've seen it personally in my own data where that occurs. And so the Purify does not have that issue. You'll also notice some things about the motor structure area, uh, the voice coil. There's some cooling and hopefully this video shows it enough, but if not, you can always go to their website. But there's holes here in the backside of the cone for cooling and then the voice coil is quite exposed for additional cooling as well. That lends itself to higher output levels without compression, without thermal compression at least. And ultimately you're able to get a, a higher SPL level with a speaker of this size and I'll get into that as well. I think the bottom line for me to go ahead and tell everyone up front for those who have the attention span that I do and have probably already tuned off is this speaker is fantastic. Um, the price is about 370 per drive unit, and that's going to scare a lot of people off. But for those people who are looking to eke out the last, you know, five to 10 percent of performance, I would say that this is for you. And I'll go back to that five to 10 percent. Typically, I've always said, you know, the extra five to 10 percent is it worth it to you? Well, in this case, I can actually objectively say that you're probably looking at even higher performance advantages compared to a more budget-minded type speaker because of the distortion, the actual measured objective data shows the distortion levels being very, very low. Um, and then also the frequency response is really quite nice. So that's a good segue. I'm going to jump into the actual data. So I'm on my website. Again, it is aaronsaudiocorner.com where I host all of my data and the actual words and pictures for the data and the review. 
And here is a photo. Here's my Amazon banner. If you ever want to help the site out, you know, if you think I got to buy blah, blah, blah from Amazon, if you want to go to my site, click through my link. I get an affiliate link. I get like two to six percent uh, commission. And so, yeah, that would be helpful. But if not, whatever. Uh, just throwing that out there in case anybody's wondering why I have Amazon links. So the retail price, $740 a pair from Mattisound. And let's keep going. Small signal parameters. To me, Small signal parameters aren't necessarily useful until you get ready to figure out how you're going to use them in an enclosure. So here, here they are for the people who want to see it. Uh, for the car audio folks, this has a very low FS of about 30 hertz and a very low QTS of about 0.3. So if you're thinking that you have to have that 0.5 to 0.7 you know, region of QTC or, or QTS, I guess, really in this case, um, for a door type speaker, don't worry about that because you're going to be crossing your speaker over almost at least two octaves higher than, or in most cases, two octaves higher than the FS of the speaker. The FS is 30. You're probably going to be crossing it over, you know, probably 80 hertz, so maybe one and a half octaves or so. But you're going to be crossing above FS, so it's not a huge deal. Um, keep going. Here's the, the meat and potatoes that everybody likes to see. How much linear excursion do I have? Linear excursion is uh, based, in this case, on my results from the Clipple machine, and that is 10% THD or 10% intermod distortion. And in this case, it's actually 6.9 millimeters one way. So about seven millimeters one way. That is higher than any of the eight inch woofers that I've recently tested. Um, I think it's second only to right now, the ScanSpeak 18WU. And yeah, seven millimeters one way out of a speaker like this size, a six and a half inch is really, really quite good. And we're gonna keep going. This is the BL over excursion. So these numbers up here come from these graphics down here. And you can read all about how I've obtained the numbers and all that information. But I just want to note quickly that this BL is pretty dang linear from about maybe seven millimeters plus or minus each way. And what that would indicate to most people at least is a very low distortion through the mid-range. So there are a couple things that really influence distortion through the mid-range, and that's BL and that's inductance. So we're going to keep going. KMS, stiffness of suspension, is uh, a bit nonlinear and a bit asymmetrical, but not terrible. And that's really more of an issue when you're talking about playing near FS, with FS being very, very low uh, to where most people are going to cross this, you know, if you're using it as a bookshelf or using it in your car. Um, you're probably still going to throw an electronic high pass filter on it, you know, 60 to 80 hertz. So not, not as much of an, a concern there. The electrical inductance, incredible. You're about 0 0.02 millihenries from plus 12 millimeters to minus 12 mil millimeters. So 24 millimeters peak to peak excursion, your delta of uh, inductance is about 0 0.02 millihenries. That's crazy low. And that's also one of the aspects that drives the distortion of the speaker being so, so low. I'm going to keep going. And there's some other stuff for people who, who want to read a little bit more. Keep going. And we're going to get to the frequency response. So the linearity of the on-axis response is really quite good. Your plus or minus one and a half dB uh, indicated by this gray box from about 100 hertz to about 1.6 kilohertz. And that's based on a mean SPL of 88.1 dB at 2.83 volts, 1 meter. Plus or minus 3 dB range is indicated by the blue area. That's 66 hertz to about 2.5 kilohertz. And that's really good. Um, the one thing that really stands out to me, besides the actual linearity of the response, is the breakup mode. So normally when you have the breakup mode, it's about an octave or so outside of the beaming point. Uh, the beaming point is related to the diameter of the, of the cone, and I'm not going to do that right now. That's a calculation, though. Um, and most speakers are 10 to 15 dB uh, breakup points. So relative to the mean SPL, they're about 10 to 15 dB higher. And that's a problem because if it's close to where you're crossing over, then that peak in SPL outside of your, your crossover point will show up uh, in other places, meaning that Let's say you cross a speaker over at 2 kilohertz and you have plus 15 dB breakup at 4 kilohertz. If you measure your response of an overall speaker system, a monitor, a loudspeaker, like a tall floor standing or something like that, you're going to have a little bit of a bump somewhere in that 4 kilohertz region because of the large breakup. But 
With this particular speaker, the breakup is less than 5 dB. That's that's great. That's really, really low. And with either some uh, active EQ or some passive uh, methods, you know, with circuits, you could attenuate that down even a little bit more. So the, the bump here uh, off axis as well is going to be very, very low. And speaking of off axis, the off axis response is, is really quite good. Um, you know, you've got the resonance again here at about 4K. So, but you're going to be crossing over most likely two kilohertz or or below. So that, that's because that's right outside of your beaming point. You're going to stay below that pass band. If you use it higher than that, then you're just introducing problems into your system. And let's go. So the distortion. This is a GIF of the distortion taken at, or the harmonic distortion taken at various output levels. The key note here is that at 100 dB, look at this red line. The red line, which is the total harmonic distortion, is below 1%. You At 100 dB, you're below 1% above 100 hertz. That's, that's, that's really good. That's the best I've seen so far. If you go up to the 3% threshold at 100 dB, you're, you're not even 3 dB until you're at 50 hertz. So 50 hertz and above, you're below 3% THD from a 6.5 inch midwoofer. That's, that's really, really good. And we'll get into intermod distortion, where intermod distortion is where you play a bass tone and then you sweep the vocal range. Uh, in this case, my vocal range is 200 hertz to 6 kilohertz. And the idea here is that you want to see what kind of effect playing a bass tone has on the distortion of higher frequencies. And in this case, if you play 30 hertz and the excursion hits at about 16.6 one, one way at 30 hertz, um, which is well outside the, the linear operating range, the distortion is still below 10 dB uh, and actually closer to about 20 dB on average at 98 dB. So that's pretty low. I um, mean, it's not great, but again, you're playing a 30 hertz tone with 16 millimeters one-way excursion. So yeah, I actually think this is really, really good, even though the number itself isn't low. With all things considered, this is a really good spec. Now, if you change the bass tone to 80 hertz, you're below 20 dB. I mean, the distortion on this driver is, is excellent. And and let's see, below 2 kilohertz, even if you stay below 1 kilohertz as your reference point, you're below 30 dB. The distortion is great on this driver. Now let's get into the multitone distortion where I achieve uh, max SPL. Max SPL is 100.6 dB for this 6.5 inch woofer with a threshold of 2 dB of compression or 3% distortion. And in this case, the threshold of compression is reached at about 500 hertz and you know, maybe 300 hertz as well. So that's what limits your SPL. If I open that passband up, which previously was 80 to 1600 hertz, uh, and I do want to note real fast that this distortion is below 1%. That's really good. Uh, if I open that passband up to let it play down to 40 hertz and up to 3200 hertz, the max SPL is still 100.6 dB. Uh, again, due to compression, the distortion is super, super low. So this max SPL as a point of reference is about 6 dB higher, uh, yeah, 6 dB higher or so than a round of 8 inch uh, long throw woofers that I've recently tested. Yeah, the distortion, again, excellent. And we're going to get to the bottom line. Bottom line is if you are looking for a 6.5 inch woofer that will play down low with good linear excursion, very, 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 very low distortion, um, excellent mid-range sound. This speaker is absolutely one that should be on your list, if not maybe the one. The only other one that I'm, I'm aware of right now that might be better is the ScanSpeak 18WU, but I haven't tested that with my new test parameters, so I can't say for sure. Um, but this thing is, comp well, it's compact-ish, I guess. It'll fit most car doors. Uh, the enclosure size, which let's go ahead and jump into that. I modeled some enclosures. For ported, which is the green, this is the shape you get. And the enclosure is about half a cubic foot with a tuning frequency of 22 hertz. Uh, now, I don't know... Xmax wise, you know, that's that's going to vary. I was just kind of looking for what's a what's a good, you know, response for a ported enclosure, but you'll want to do your own, obviously. If I went sealed, the sealed enclosure size would be about one quarter cubic foot for a F3 point of about 65 hertz. And then for those in car audio who would want to go, quote, IB, 
uh, this is kind of the shape that you've got too. So just kind of food for thought. Obviously you need to do your own modeling if you're gonna try to put this in an enclosure, but that's kind of give you an idea. But yeah, um, if, you, if you can fit this speaker in your budget and you want a really awesome speaker, get it. And that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna leave it there. If you guys are not subscribed currently, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below, hit the notifications bell. And that's it. I appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.